Good afternoon, everybody. Climate change is an issue that is affecting all of us, but is the way that we communicate it too complex? We're going to find out today in this episode of the Social Impact Journal, the podcast where I talk to the change makers, experts, and founders driving positive change in our world. My name is Jack Farron, and I'm your host, and I'll be speaking with Jenny Wilson today, the Climate Change Communication and Advocacy Manager for the World Food Programme and the Chair of the Global Board for Restless Development. Jenny, how are you? Welcome to the show. Hey, Jack. Thanks for having me. I'm very excited. No, me too. Me too. I think this is a topic that we we probably should have touched on a lot earlier in the podcast. Um, as I said, cl- climate change is affecting affecting all of us. But when you talk to people maybe outside of the global development sector, it feels like the communications, the way the messaging is is, is displayed might be too complex for people to really take individual action. Would you agree? Yeah, absolutely. Um, And I think people are starting to talk about climate change more and more, but it is such a huge topic. It's so overwhelming. I mean, Mm. I get overwhelmed by it. I feel incredibly anxious a lot of the time because climate change, the climate crisis, and how it's affecting us now, but it's going to affect us even more in the future. Like, it's terrifying. Um, And so I think, you know, that negativity that surrounds the narrative, it switches people off. You know, they're like, Mm. this is such a huge topic. Where do I even start? Um, So, yeah, it's we we definitely need to break it down. We need to we need to switch from this doom and gloom narrative into into positive stories of of hope, showing people how they can create change, the better world that we can imagine if we tackle climate change. So before we maybe dive really deep into this topic, you work with uh, the World Food Programme right now and also with Restless Development, but I know you've, you've been and travelled across the whole world, so it'd be great to hear a bit more about your, your career story. Yeah, sure. So I studied geography at university, partly because I didn't really know what else to do. I was 18 (laughs) and I was like, I don't know. Um, But I loved it. I thought it was, I really loved, um, I did human geography. So really thinking about people and the geography of where they live and why they're there. Um, A lot of migration, geopolitics, that link between the earth and and people was was really interesting. Um, And then kind of by chance, I got involved in a development volunteering program um, and yeah, absolutely loved it and realized that 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 humanitarian development work was was what I wanted to do. So um, worked and lived in Nicaragua, Uganda, um, worked in Northern France on the, the, the refugee crisis a few years ago. And yeah, I've now been with the World Food Programme for nearly five years and um, the last couple of years working on, on climate change issues. Um, and yeah, now I'm the communications and, and advocacy manager, um, which is very exciting. Um, the World Food Programme is the, the largest humanitarian organisation feeding people all over the world. Um, and so that link between between food and hunger and climate mm. is is really, really clear. And more and more people are being pushed into hunger all over the world. So helping people to understand how climate change impacts yep. um, impacts uh, food security is 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 what I do but also showcasing the positive solutions right. showing that there is you know there is there is positive change that, that we yeah. can make um, and yeah I'm also on the global board of, of restless development which is a, a youth-led agency and um, that focuses on youth power youth leadership um, and giving people young people supporting them to have the skills to 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 lead change in their communities awesome Awesome. Uh, let's start with some quick fire questions and maybe some definitions of some of the, the key terms in the, in the climate action space. Climate change. I think everyone in the whole world has, has heard this word before, but many might not really understand how, uh, you know, what it actually means. So for you, what would be a simple definition for, for climate change? Yeah, so I think crucial here is that, I mean, the climate has always changed, um, but in recent years, this the climate is changing because of humans. Basically, mm. since the Industrial Revolution, when we started burning fossil fuels um, for manufacturing, for for transport, for um, for energy, basically, um, we release um, greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. And I'm not a scientist; I won't get into the science of it. But basically, that is heating up the the earth and we hear a lot of people talking about 1.5 degrees two degrees um but crucially this heating up of the earth is creating um is causing more extreme weather events so we see more droughts more heat waves um and and that is 
that is what we 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 talk about with climate change next one carbon carbon emissions carbon markets carbon credits we hear all of those terms mm. but what do they actually mean yeah, so carbon dioxide is is one of the greenhouse gases which is emitted when we burn fossil fuels, mm. um, and so this is this is one of the gases that goes into the atmosphere and that is um, is basically trapping heat in the atmosphere and okay. causing the earth to to heat up. Um, but I think really crucial here is that carbon emissions. Um, um, and, and, and carbon footprints, everybody has a carbon footprint. Um, mm. You or I have them, um, an organization has them, a country has them, and that basically means the amount of carbon emissions um, that we emit into the atmosphere from our activities. Um, but we have much higher carbon footprints than people in um, on the African continent, for example. So Africa produces around, I think, less than 4% of global emissions. Yep yet they experience the, some of the worst impacts of climate mm -hmm. change. So it's a real issue of climate climate injustice, basically. Um, and that's a lot of the, the conversation at the moment um, and understanding, you know, don't want to get into the debate of who's responsible and who should pay for these things and, and all of that. But it's a, yeah. it's a real big debate at the moment that I think people will, will yeah. hear people talking about. What about net zero? Yeah, so net zero basically means that the amount of emissions that we put into the atmosphere is balanced by the amount of emissions that we take out of the atmosphere. So things okay. like carbon capture and storage um, or planting trees, for example, which absorb carbon dioxide. And I think people will hear a lot of um, net zero uh, targets at the moment. So a lot of countries and organizations have put, uh, put a timeline on when they're going to reach net zero. Mm. Um, and a lot of those targets are as far away as 2050, which okay. arguably is too late. Um, you know, we're already seeing the impacts of climate change all over the world. Yeah, yeah. Um, emissions are emissions haven't gone down, they're still increasing. Um, so if we wait until 2050 um, or even longer for, for, some, for some people, it's, uh, it's, we, need, we need faster action. Yeah. So you said Africa produces only 4% of, of global emissions, but they are some of the worst hit with, with extreme weather events and, and natural disasters. That, that's a, an unbelievable yeah. statistic, really. Yeah, no, it's really... It's really scary. And there's another one um, that came out a few years ago. I think it was an Oxfam report that said the richest 1% produce double the emissions than the, the poorest half of humanity, basically. No way. Um, which is absolutely terrifying. That's 1% um, of the individuals, but all the, maybe the corporations that they... Yeah, I think, I think it's individuals. Well. Um, wow. Yeah, no, it's... So 1% uh, of the world is... is. 70 million maybe and yeah. then versus three and a half billion yeah yeah no it's absolutely That's insane incredible. um and yeah the impacts that we're seeing across the world i mean over, i think over 40 percent of the world live in places that are vulnerable to climate change um and the impacts in many of those countries are are so extreme i mean mm. in somalia for example they or in the the Horn of Africa, that, that region, they've just come out of um, several consecutive years of failed rainy seasons mm. and extreme drought. Um, and then when the rains finally came, they caused flooding and extreme flash flooding. Um, and so, you know, it's kind of like a, a cruel... You can't win either way, you know. Yeah, yeah. no, it's in, insane. But then I think, and one of the reasons that I I suppose I'm, I'm hopeful is that the world is starting to wake up to this because climate change is now impacting lots of other countries, you know, um, lots of parts of, of Europe and, and North America, um, who, you know, are some of the worst emitters and the, um, they're, they're, they're experiencing the impacts as well. You know, yeah. we've seen, we've seen heat waves, we've seen wildfires, mm. um, and people are starting to realize that actually they're not safe from climate change. Yeah. yeah. No, so I think we were, we were talking about this off air that we're both from the UK. And the weather in the UK, it never gets too hot. It never really gets too cold. But in the last few years, we've seen, you know, we've seen some real, real heat waves. Yeah. Um, and I find, I don't know about you, but when I'm, when I'm chatting to friends in the UK and, and it gets really hot and they're really excited by that. They're like, <laughs> oh yeah, we can go to the beach. This is amazing. <laughs> we never have this in the UK. Um, but I am starting to notice now that people are linking that to climate change. And, right, okay. and you know and I'm always the one and my friends are always they're like oh it's all you talk about you know mm. um but actually people are starting to realize okay it's, it's perhaps not a good thing if we're re yeah. reaching temperatures in the 30s in the UK um and often not in the traditional summer months as yeah. well yeah. we're seeing these seasons shift as well um and this is what we need we need more of these conversations to happen in everyday life mm. Mm. um we need people to 
to to link it to to things that affect them you know climate change affects everything from from health to to food security um to to sports activities you know yeah. um i think we saw last winter that a lot of the ski resorts that there's not enough snow yeah. for for people to go skiing so as climate change starts to impact the everyday lives of people yeah. people start to wake up and think oh actually this is important right. and maybe i should care about it because i guess if you said europe is is one of the the worst emitters but maybe the climate crisis you know before was too far away mm. from them if, if if there's extreme weather events happening in other parts of the world and i think really what i wanted to ask today was about how we can how climate communications can be delivered in a way that that each different group can understand that climate change matters to them mm. and it's a pressing challenge for them and i think if that's starting to happen in europe with changing weather patterns then i you know if, if people are really starting to to feel that and and start that conversation mm. is that the most important thing that for people to take action is it is it individual efforts or is it actually starting the conversations with with friends family colleagues yeah i think i mean i mentioned before you know that there's shifting the narrative from the negative to the positive mm. and i think it's m people feel more compelled to take action if they can see a positive outcome from what they're doing. Yep. So if we can present these solutions to people and show people the positive change that they can have. Um, but also I think it's really important to talk about it, as you say, at the local level. So it's really hard to sympathize with somebody in Somalia, for example. For, for most people that seems so far away. They don't know that person, they don't have any connection with them. But if you talk about the climate crisis in somebody's local community and crucially in the present tense mm. you know rather than oh in 2050 this is going to happen again yeah. it's it's so abstract for people to understand and so i find that talking um talking to people about their local community about their family about not just the impact that the climate crisis is having or, or will continue to have but the better world that we can have if we tackle climate right. change. Right. So I think, you know, net zero gets thrown around a lot. And again, that's hard for people to understand. But if you talk about clean air, if you say to somebody, okay, but if we reduce emissions, your child or you will be breathing in cleaner air. Yeah. Um, that will have huge health benefits. Um, if we plant more trees, for example, yeah. you know, you have that greener community. And mm, it, mm. I think relating it to things like that is, yeah. is really, really important. So it's about localizing and keeping it in the in the present tense. Have you seen any any case studies or examples of of organizations or you know individuals that have been able to use this this technique? Yeah, I think more and more organizations are getting so good at, at climate communications and at, at communicating with people outside of the norm. I yeah. think um, we're here at COP28 right now in Dubai, and I think some people get a bit trapped in that bubble. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we're preaching to the choir a little bit at times and talking to people who already, um, already agree and already yeah. know about yeah. these things, but we need to sort of expand outside of that yeah. bubble. Um, and I think you know, once we start to see these conversations happening in the entertainment industry, for example, um, we see influencers, celebrities yeah, yeah. who are taking this seriously and are, are talking about it. That's when we'll start to see real change. Um, there's this really nice example that I saw a couple of years ago with um, Reading Football Club. Okay. And the footballers had um, these the warming stripes on their kit, which is right, um, yeah. which is showing the, the temperature rise. Um, and it's really powerful. It goes from blue to red and it's a, wow. really, a really powerful image. But the footballers had this on their kit. Mm. And so the commentators started talking about climate change during right, a football right, match. Yeah. And, you know, that's a space that climate conversations haven't really come into yet yeah. um, and once we start seeing that I think that's when the the real change will start to happen and that's it's quite a subtle it's not let's say a, a big loud message mm. but it's it's being worn by people that are not you know with a humanitarian agency not with an NGO so to speak it's you know footballers yeah and it might be a, an audience that as you said uh, possibly not so um, you know, educated about about yeah. this about this current crisis. Um, yeah, that's fascinating. Mm -hmm. is, is there any others maybe you've seen from 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 organisations in their 
in their social media uh, in their social media efforts. Yeah, I think another thing that people do, which is really great, is these positive news stories. So mm. a lot of people do a kind of round up at the end of the week of the positive climate news that we've yeah. seen that week. Um, and I've, again, linking back to that that positive narrative, I think that's really really powerful. Um, and another thing is sort of um, explainer content works really well. Again, breaking down these topics yeah. um, in language that people can understand. And I think there's there's so much so much amazing work happening across mm. the the humanitarian world the climate world the development world um but often these you know it, we stop people accessing those spaces and understanding yep. it because we use technical language um and you know as i say i'm not a scientist i don't i try one of my job is to try and break it down into yep. really simple language um to get people to understand and to bring them into that space and i think also you know we need you don't have to be a scientist or a mm. geographer or an, even an activist to take action on climate change yeah. and to talk about it. You know, you mentioned talking to your friends and family and a lot of people ask me, okay, what's the, if I'm going to do one thing to, to, to tackle climate change, what should it be? And of course there's loads of individual actions. You know, you can, um, you can switch to an electric car, you can use public transport more, um, you know, you can adjust your diet, like there's, you know, fly less. There's all of these individual actions you can do, which are so important, obviously. But I always say the most powerful thing that you can do is to talk to your family, okay. your friends, your yep. peers, um, and start having these conversations and bringing them mm. into different spaces that they're not right. traditionally in. Yeah. So bringing those conversations to everyday life, like like football, yeah. like we just discussed. Yeah. So you mentioned on COP. So COP, you know, COP twenty eight has, has has just recently happened, and that's a space where high level delegations from governments, from United Nations agencies, observer organisations attend. Do you think the general public have a, a good understanding of of what's going on at these events and the outcomes of of those conferences? I think they are starting to. I think, um, you know, the COP summits are, they're, they're breaking through into mainstream media. Mm. There is, you know, a lot of a lot of media that is showcasing what's happening at COP. Yeah. Um, and there are, you know, there's some, some big headlines as well. So I think it is starting to, but I think, again, we have to be aware of operating in a, in a bubble as yeah, such. Yeah. Um, I, was, I was with some friends here in Dubai who were, who were here on holiday and not actually involved in COP. Um, but we were having those conversations. You know, they were aware that COP was happening okay. and we were, start, we were talking about it, um, but not at the, at the level of, you know, the, the, the detail that mm, is happening. Mm. Um, not to say, not to discount that, you know, the COP summits are a very, very important space um and they are the you know the in many ways the the best that we have in in yeah. in tackling in climate change and and some some really important um decisions have been made and there's a lot of momentum moving forward um but a lot a lot more that that yeah. needs to be needs yeah. to be done jenny i completely agree um and i think there's there's so much work that needs to be done on climate communications and i think one of the takeaways from today is that it's localizing that message, it's keeping it in the present tense, and it's being delivered in a, by someone who maybe is not in the traditional, mm -hmm. you know, climate action space. And I feel like, you know, the, the, the example I'll mention again of the, of the football with Reading Football Club seems to have t seems to tackle all three of all three of those. And it's a visualization as well yeah. on the arm. So you have your your social impact journal here. So if you were to write a page in this book for organizations that are, are set up to tackle the climate crisis, what piece of advice would you give to them in terms of simplifying the language they use and also the, the different delivery methods they have to deliver messages around climate issues that are really relevant to the audience and can, can enact that, that action? Yeah, so I think, I mean, the first one, and I've mentioned it a couple of times already, is this positivity narrative. Mm. I think we really need to break away from this this doom and gloom that is that is talked about with climate change. I mean, you know, a lot of people feel so hopeless, basically. Yeah. They're like, well, what's the point? You know, it's going to happen anyway. And mm. 
you know, um, and I think we can we can no longer say actually that um, oh well it's not going to affect me, you know, um, because actually it is. It's affecting yeah. us now, um, and it is going to you know within our lifetimes. It's no longer you know our children, our grandchildren. Um, but I don't think you know that's not working. That narrative, it's not. Mm. It, it's not helping. People are just feeling you know anxious about it, um, and so I think we need to switch that narrative and be very positive in how we talk about it. Yeah talk about you know how we can envision that better world mm. for us and for our children um, and so I think positivity is definitely um, one of the one of the main things that, that people can people can do shift that narrative um, and I think also the the local angle yep. bringing it back to 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 what people can understand um, and you know what means something to them mm. there's a really nice quote um, I think it's from Maya Angelou who says, People won't remember what you said. They won't remember what you did, but they will remember how you made them feel. And okay. I'm paraphrasing there, but you know, I think that people, that feeling is so important. People need to feel something to take action. They're not going to, you know, if you if you tell somebody what to do, um, then they're yeah. not, you know, it's really difficult to make people people do something. But if you can make them feel something and you can make it relevant to them and they can see the positive outcome that their mm, actions mm. can have, then I think that's how you really create change. So that's what I would write in my book. Awesome, awesome. Jenny, it's been really great to have you on uh, as, a, as a climate comms expert to, to break down these topics. And I'm sure our audience have, have really enjoyed it also. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me, Jack. Thank you for watching this episode with Jenny Wilson. If you enjoyed the episode and want to see more, from the Social Impact Journal, please do follow or subscribe. We release episodes every Monday at 9am GMT. Thank you so much.